I really do see a parallel between what's happening in the United States and what ha what's happening here. People want to see borders. Uh, they don't necessarily want people pouring into their country that they don't know who they are and where they come from. They have no idea. And I think, you know, it, it not only did it win, but it won by a much bigger margin than people thought it would happen. It is at the core of what Donald Trump claims he will do if elected president. Repair the broken immigration system by first shutting the American borders and then considering the merits of deporting those here illegally. A core that has millions of Americans cheering and saying it's about time. So the timing of this week's Supreme Court decision handing President Obama a major defeat on his immigration legacy could not have been better for Trump. Or worse, for those who say they deserve to stay in America even though they are technically here illegally. We'll begin with Friday's version of The Political Animal. Welcome in the Opinionators, reminding you as well, if you have an opinion on this yourself, get on the line now at 1-877-NEWSMAX and join us. First, he is the well-known conservative strategist and commentator, veteran lobbyist, host of Behind the Curtain, weekends here on Newsmax TV, Jack Berkman. Joined by the Republican strategist and professor at Georgetown University, Bradley Blakeman. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Jack, let me begin with you. There are people saying that this decision by the Supreme Court is going to help Hillary Clinton in the election. Others say, wait a minute, Donald Trump is telling us what Americans want at this time, and this goes in his corner come November. What do you think? No, it definitely helps Republicans because it raises the saliency of the immigration issue, particularly for swing voters. The more salient immigration is, Ed, uh, uh, the, the better Republicans will do. It helps Republicans to mobilize the base. It even might become an issue for swing voters. You know, this coupled with events in Britain, uh, uh, coupled sadly with the shooting, raising the saliency of, of, uh, of uh, radical Islam and terrorism, all of these things in the last 30 days are helping Don Donald Trump while he stumbles along with a campaign that's almost non-existent, but macro events are helping him. All right. Now, Bradley, I think the wording in there is stumbles along, because let's be honest, Donald Trump has stumbled along recently. But when he has this in his back pocket right now, and we'll talk about Brexit in just a moment, but if he has this in his back pocket right now, do you see this as helping him? Oh, absolutely. This helps him. The problem with Donald Trump is can he capitalize on it? And you need the organization, you need the messaging, you need the discipline in order to do that. He's being handled, handed something on a silver platter, and it's really up to him to exploit it for his best and highest use, and that is to tell the American people that everything he's been saying all along in the primary is coming home to roost. The American people want safe and secure borders. The people in Europe want the same thing. We want go less government control. The people in Europe want the same thing. This is not just an anomaly that's happening in America. We see now this is global. The, the, the whole citizenry of free uh, um, nations is to get government and regulation off our backs and also concentrate on securing our borders. So with government then off their backs, that certainly is at the core of what happened with Brexit right now. We've been talking about that here earlier in the program. So I'll stay with you for a moment here, Brad, on this, because Donald Trump held his press conference in Scotland. Of course, he got the point wrong about Scotland wanting to leave because they actually wanted to stay by a two to one count. But staying in on what the Europeans did at this point, there seems to be a thinking process by many people that this is going to help Donald Trump bigger than anything else. They're going to say that he's had it right all along. And finally, people in Europe are starting to listen. And maybe the rest of the world is going to listen. This will be a big boost for him. Your take. Well, perhaps uh, Britain wanted to make Britain uh, great again. Um, there is no question that Donald Trump has hit on a nerve, uh, not only here at home, but he's also uh, identified something that is beyond our borders. And uh, Obama tried to put his thumb on the scale yesterday, threatening the people of Britain and rejected that. And today the president was 100 percent conciliatory to the Brits, saying, of course, they're our closest ally. Donald Trump's been getting it right. The question is, can he exploit it? And there's the next thing, Jack, yeah. because we keep hearing those words populist backlash in other places like Austria, France, Germany, here in the United States as well. Is this really now, and we're talking about what Trump needs to do in order to get right down the issue and keep people in, in his corner and keep on message. Does he have to keep, and I would imagine you'd say yes, keep hammering away at the populist backlash, maybe even taking credit for it in many ways? 
Oh, sure. All of this, and Brad and I are of one mind on this completely so, all of this will enable Trump to reach out to white working class voters. All of the talk about immigration, uh, all of the talk about radical Islam. Remember, Brexit was really caused by Muslim immigration in Britain. That's probably about 95 percent of the issue of why Britain left the EU. It was working class voters that threw this over the top uh, that made the difference in, in England. So. Political trends often start in London. It was Thatcher in 79, remember, that really uh, was the harbinger of Reagan in many ways. So there's a whole history of trends starting over there that come here. Now you might see a far right-wing government in London. Imagine that. Nobody would have thought 10 years ago we'd ever see such a thing. But the issues, uh, this is a unique opportunity for Trump to define Hillary. But, but as Bradley said, He's got to have the apparatus to do that. Now is his moment, but does he have the guns and the people in place to do that? He has the issues. The macro environment is perfect, but can he execute? one eight seven seven newsmax if you'd like to join us. Let's continue to talk about Donald Trump here in a moment, because, Bradley, you mentioned this as well. Jack, I know you've talked about it as well. Donald Trump needs to stay on message and needs to be a hard hitter when he's out there. An interview with NBC Nightly News. Donald Trump had a very difficult time answering the questions from Lester Holt, who was talking and asking him about evidence. Donald Trump says there was a server hack for Hillary Clinton. Holt went right at him, and here's what it sounded like. You also made the claim that her email, personal email server, had been hacked probably by foreign governments, suggesting that... Well, you don't know that it hasn't well, been. Well, anyway, suggesting that, that she would be compromised as president. What evidence do you have? Well, first of all, she shouldn't have had a personal server, okay? She shouldn't have had it. It's illegal. What she did is illegal. Now, she might not be judged that way because, you know, we have a rigged system. But what she did is illegal. She shouldn't have had a personal but server. But is there any evidence that it was hacked other than uh, routine phishing I think attacks? I read that and I heard it and somebody Where? that also gave me that information. I will report back to you. I'll give it to you. Bradley, isn't it fair to say that Mr. Trump did not really answer the question. And if he's going to make statements like this, people want him to win. He's got millions of people behind him who say, we want you to get out there and win. They want him to be correct. They want him to hammer away at the facts. They want him to nail Hillary Clinton and basically take her out of the race. Doesn't he need to be a little more careful and make sure that he's ready to back it up? You bet. Look, with Hillary Clinton, there's no need to embellish. There's enough there, there. Uh, there are 100 FBI agents working on this case as we speak. The, he, he, the Donald Trump could have referred to the IG at the State Department who said what she, was, what she was doing was wrong. He could have referred to the fact that there are 2,000 emails that are alleged to have classified materials. There's a whole bunch of factual evidence that has come out before the American people. He needs to know what that is, and he needs to be factual, and he cannot embellish. And he must be factual, and you are right. There's a tremendous amount of evidence out there. You don't need to make it up as you go along, certainly not on Hillary Clinton. Les from Victoria, Texas, joins us real quickly at one newsmax Les, 30 seconds. Brexit and the immigration problem in South Texas. Go ahead. Yeah, as you've know, heard, uh, we are now uh, have over 10,000 uh, illegals coming into South Texas in a month at this time. Uh, you can see it on the streets. Uh, but the, the local uh, American Hispanics are totally against this. Uh, I've got several friends that are, and they all will be voting for Donald Trump. Okay. Donald Trump is actually the luckiest man probably to come along in years. Because everything that has happened is uh, it's like a godsend for him. Everything that's happened is basically... Uh, just fall in his, in his lap. He's, uh, I told you so. And uh, you know, the Brexit, the next thing we need on his uh, stump speech is a Brexit. All right, Les, Barack. thank you very much for your comments. We do appreciate it. Let's very quickly get one from Jeff in Key Largo, Florida, on immigration also. Jeff, 30 seconds, go ahead. Deception. That's what uh, Hillary Clinton is winning on uh, deception, and people fall for it. But as far as immigration, I can't go across the Mexican border without a passport or visa because they'll put me in jail. And, you know, it's like if, if I were to break into somebody's home, I'd be charged with uh, breaking and entering. They're breaking into our country, and it's full. And uh, you know what? I have uh, Mexican tenants and they are, they're sick of this, too. There's a lot of uh, Mexicans that have been working here. They're legal Mexicans. People, and I don't want to call them Mexicans. They're Americans, for God's sakes. 
I'm but glad you made that distinction. Too. I'm glad you made that distinction. Thanks for your call. We appreciate that. Jack, very briefly, 20 seconds. Is that not what Donald Trump has got to do? Get to the Americans here. Not, the, not call the Mexicans, but the Americans here. Mexican descent. Those yeah. are the ones who basically are just as angry as anybody else. Trump's got to do two of three things. He's got to do what he's doing with white working class voters, and then he's got to find a way to move the needle with either blacks or Hispanics. I actually think with African Americans is the play. Hispanics are too big, too diverse. You can't move the needle in six months. If I were him, I'd focus on African Americans. And everybody looking to move the needle here as we head towards November between Brexit, money, immigration. Donald Trump has got it all sitting right in front of him. All he has to do is hit the facts. And I think that's the salient point that Bradley certainly brought up. Bradley Blakeman, Jack Berkman, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. We appreciate your time. Sage advice for those who believe Donald Trump needs to become more presidential. And there's a way to do that. It's all about the brand. It's coming up next right here on The Hardline.